Hello, everyone. It's your Meadow Hair for the day. How are all of you guys doing? I hope you're doing okay. Today, we're going to do something crazy. We are going to make a snake. So get out your active objects and let's go to it. So first thing you're going to need is a 48 by 48 sprite. 48 by 48 pixels is a multiple of 16. I usually make all of my sprites a multiple of 16. But wait, there's more. If you order right now, you can get a free box set of Multimedia Fusion 2 tutorials by Meadowhair. These features, these tutorials rather, will feature, yeah, you know, forget it. Hi everybody, it's your Meadowhair. We're making a snake because I just need to post something because, you know, I've just been inactive for so long. And then I posted that thing yesterday, which is just, you know, a soccer game thing um, that I made for somebody. So, yeah, if you haven't visited his site, still go visit it. Visit it. Anyway, so like I said in that announcer voice, we're going to uh, make a snake today. This is a simple thing to do. You don't need anything in advance. Um, you just need to make a few circles. You know, I'm just going to not even put an outline on this one. We're going to do this fast, okay? We're going to do this fast. I haven't prepared. I didn't even practice this. We're just going to do it. Snake tail. And this is, you guessed it, snake head. And we're going to go in here. We're going to add a couple uh, values to this thing too. We're not going to name them yet because we need one more object. And this object, uh, that's fine. No, just just put something there. Doesn't matter. This is going to be invisible. You're not going to need to see this. So, um, just going to name this, uh, let's name it Snake. Typing with one hand is not all that easy. Snake Detector. Alright, so we have three objects, Snake, Tail, Snake Head, and Snake Detector. We're just going to go in here and put Always, and Always, and I'll Always Love You, or something. We're going to always, on the first always, we're going to spread and value A0. We're also going to need to name that tail tail. No, that's not what I want to do. Tail ID. And that's it for now. We're also going to put an ID in this thing. Just name it ID. Zero. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to clone this thing. No, we're not going to clone this thing. We're going to duplicate this thing. Just make five of them or something. Put them off over here. Doesn't matter. Wow, they blend in way too much with the background. So I'm going to misclick. But then right after that, I'm going to color these blue. Just because. Okay, so we spread value zero in that. We're going to also spread value zero in that. We're also always going to start a fast loop just called tail I guess and we're gonna start it the number of this object times alright got that so we're gonna spread value in each of these IDs we're also gonna start loop tail as many number of objects do we have as this also to avoid screwing things up we're gonna make it so this doesn't get created at start doesn't get destroyed if it's too far from frame just do the same for all three while you're at it and then on the third always, we're going to say create snake detector at this thing. But wait, there's more. Because we also need to make an event that says when the ID is greater than 50, we're going to destroy that. Also, for the purposes of this simple tutorial, we're not really going to need those values because I just decided that we're just going to make this thing bouncing ball. No, I didn't decide that. I decided we're going to make this a uh, this thing. We're also going to set its acceleration and deceleration to the max value. 
Actually, that was not the acceleration and deceleration. I set the speed to way too high, so we're going to set that to, uh, let's see, 40. I tend to set speeds in multiples of 8 because 8 is actually one pixel per frame. Speaking of frames, I'm going to switch this to, no, not that. I'm going to switch it to 60 frames per second. I'm also going to set the movement timer to 60 because that will match the frames per second. Alright, so let me explain what I just did here. And sorry, I'm moving really fast today. So, yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. The spread value function just adds uh, spreads of value. Like the first one of these created will have 0, then the next one will have 1, the next one will have 2, 3, 4, 5. However many objects there are, you know, it'll have that many, uh, that value for its ID. It's a good way of differentiating them. Start loop tail. We haven't done anything for loop tail, but it's just going to read through all these objects and uh, do something. And then when the ID is greater than 50, which means, actually we're going to change this from always. I'm going to say when, um, when the speed of this is greater than 0. Now let's see if this works. Ah, ah, see that? see how it uh, destroys them. What's happening here is every frame I'm moving I create an object and it's still reading through and seeing okay well you have all these you know IDs. The first one that's created remember is 0. The next one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and so on and it counts up until there's 50 of them and the last one when it has a value that's greater than 50 it's gonna get destroyed. So basically it's limiting the number of objects to 50, which is exactly what we want to do. We're also going to do this very cheaply and say, uh, I'll just loop that, do whatever, and just create rotated directions. And you should have a bunch of very aliased uh, things there. Alright, so now we're going to finally get onto this part and say on loop tail tails like in sonic you know tails good old tails when this thing's id is equal to the fast loop id of tail also at the same time when this thing's id the tail id is equal to this thing's id divided by 5 we're going to set this thing's position to that thing. Now what did I just do there? Well as you can see we have a nice little tail that follows us. If we stop it stops because I set it to um, only when I'm moving. Um, so what it's doing is reading through each of these things. It's going uh, starting here and going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know, da 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 da. It's also looking through and saying when this thing's on the ID of these little dots, you know what, actually let me refine that just a second here, just a second, because they're all kind of running into each other, and it makes, a, makes it hard, sorry, to uh, differentiate and so on. So we're going to do that so that you can see them more clearly. Alright, there we go. So now you can see the individual little dots. It's reading through, when it finds a dot that has a value like, let's say, of 10. It's going to go in here and say, when well, this thing, you know, remember, these things have an ID 2. So it's going to say, okay, well, this thing's ID is 2. When this thing, the tail ID of the little dot, or the ID of the dot, is 10, it's going to divide it by 5 and see, oh, well, 10 divided by 5 is 2. It's also equal to this thing. So it kind of, what it does, basically, well, let me show you. If you take this and say divide by 10, well, if you do the math in your head, you can probably guess what happens. If you didn't, well, that's okay. It makes the space in between the tail segments a little bigger. Actually, much bigger. And um, it causes things to look very cool. Also, you can do this. Um, let's make a little eye-looking thing there. We're going to do the same thing in this thing as we did in the other thing. I usually, like, the reason I make two... Uh, uh, frames there and loop it is because later on I tend to make it so you know if 
wow, I just totally lost my train of thought there. But if you make an event where it's talking about, like, the animation stopped is playing, if you make it one frame and don't tell it to loop, like, it won't count it as playing. Also, we just made that uh, frame and those uh, directions, but it's not working. That's because we're going to use the second value in this thing. We're going to say Annie Dur. Uh, we're also going to call that Annie Direction. Or actually, we're going to, that's the. You know what I mean, probably. It's just short for Animation Direction. Annie Dur. Alright, so when this thing's moving, we're also going to, we're going to create one of those at the thing's head. We're also going to set it's any dir, dir to its current direction value. And when this thing is set to that spot that it's assigned to, it's also going to set its direction to, you guessed it, any dir. And as a result of that, we're going to have the things that look in the same direction that the head was looking when it reached that spot, no matter what, and it looks really cool. Now it follows perfectly, and you can even clone this again. Let's say we bring it up here, or duplicate it, sorry. Make eight of those things, and I'm going to make it so it goes back to five. Oh boy, check that out. That's That looks cool. All right, the real magic comes when you just tell this thing to be invisible at the start, uncheck visible at start, and there you go. Now you have a wonderfully animated tail snake object that you can control. Um, depending on the reception of this, I might do a second episode where we have it um, have it be auto control, like like an enemy that follows the player like rotates toward them you know just to make it you know if you want to make a boss like this or something it would be pretty cool um otherwise this has been your meadow here showing you how to make a snake thing i just moved this thing to the front that's all i did just then and uh yeah so that's pretty much it if you want to hold on a second you can make this that's pretty cool what you can do with this. You can just add a backdrop. Um, right, let's just really quickly do something like this. Gonna extend it across, um, make it an obstacle. You can even just do things like this. Say, make this a pinball movement. And let's just see what happens. Whoops. Well, it would help if I went in here and said if it collides with a backdrop that it would uh, bounce. And there we go. And it just bounces right off of there. So yeah, you can make things like that and it looks like a really cool classic enemy type. I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. Of course, it just keeps bouncing off. It's because I need walls. I'm just going to clone this. I have no idea how long I've been at this. I mean, this is probably the most unrehearsed episode of any tutorial I've ever done. Literally, like, ever. I just went right in here. You know what? I said to myself, I'm just going to record a video. So I grabbed my mic, and I hit record. And here we are. So there you go. It just bounces like you'd expect the tail follows it um wow that was weird you're gonna have to be careful though one last word of caution because if i set these things to visible at start again you can see that it extends slightly beyond the actual tail because i don't have as many of these uh, tail objects to uh, need all of these points which are basically tracking points for where the head was at a certain point if you make it too long, or try to make, like, say I say divided by 10 again. Now, there's 8 of these things, and it's divided by 10. So basically, like in a nutshell, I'd need 80 of these things to have a point for all of these tail segments. Obviously, since they get destroyed at 50, I'm not going to have enough. So if that happens, you get this bunch up at the end of it. 
and uh, it can, you know, not look as good. What you can also do, um, just real quick, I'm just kind of, <laughs> I know I'm extending this episode, and a lot of you probably have quit watching by now. Of course, if you have, then you wouldn't even know, because you wouldn't be hearing me right now. Um, wow, that thing's really bad at shrinking the shape, oh my god. Well, I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. Maybe if I hit resample, that doesn't help much at all. Anyway, um, create rotated directions. Actually set the speed to zero and then create the rotated directions, yes. And uh, I'm just going to go in here and on this other always, I'm going to say always set its animation frame to its tail ID. Um, we're also going to set this back to 5, so it works better. And as you can see, the tail just kind of taper. Whoops. Tail just kind of tapers off like that. But you can't really see it very well because I have these things visible again. If I turn that off, then you'll see that you can have a nicely tapered tail. Actually, that's not what nicely ta- Whoa, that was weird. I guess that movement's a little glitchy. But, um, yeah. So very quickly, within, you know, however many minutes this has taken, within, you know, 15 minutes, actually that's more like, uh, well, a thousand seconds is what, how many minutes, 900 seconds would be 15, so, uh, about 18 minutes maybe, wow, it's kind of long. Anyway, I'm not even going to save this, actually I might post this in the description, if you're trying to follow along, or if you want to make the same thing, you can just, you know, take this, look at the code, what little there is of it, and figure it out for yourself. So, this has been your Meadow Hair for the day, and signing out, we are going to wish you a happy, that was the most awkward phrasing I've ever used. Anyway, I'm signing out now, and I wish you a happy day, remember to smile, remember to be happy. And I will see you all later as you see my sound being recorded over there. Well, that's okay. So I'm going to stop this and you'll hear the sound cut out because I'm going to stop this and then stop the video. So, sound's kind of going to cut out now. Nah.